Still happy. Why are you still happy? Still happy. Yeah. Oh, we are on the end of the phone. All right. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. I don't know why I don't want to get sales comment. Good evening and welcome to the town board of the Sigma Hossing. Together. <laughs> Let's try again. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the town board of the town of Austin regular meeting for Tuesday, September 27th, 2022. Please rise and join me. The pledge, please. Okay. Um, Council Member Feldman? Present. Council Member Meyer? Present. Council Member Monique? Here. Council Member Fields to Will? Here. And Supervisor Lovenberg? Here. Uh, we have our public hearing in the local law regarding restoration of town roads. So, first on our agenda is the public hearing on the local law regarding restoration of town roads, as we mentioned by the one from Melissa Kitasaka. Um, this legislation aims to establish standards for how our town roads are required to be restored following work by outside entities like utilities. Some of you may be familiar with some of that work going on right now. Uh, this legislation has been reviewed by our highway superintendent Steve Connolly. Uh, before I open it up to the public for comments, my board colleagues or our town council have anything to add. Um, I think this is a great piece of legislation. I think it makes a big difference for our community. And I'm like, yep, I agree with Liz. I think it's a great idea to get something started on paper. Yep. I agree as well. Um, I agree as well, and I just want it to be publicly known that when they do restore roads, it is expected to be full width restoration and not any type of heavy lift. Well, the absolutely, yes. I mean, the, what the have a law lays it out, it depends, right? So it's either half or full, depending on how far they go. Okay. And, but we're specifically asking because if it's, if it was a, for example, a newly restored road, you may not have to do the entire right. uh, per Right. Um, the other thing, actually, that I was thinking maybe we could add, and I would just love to hear how the council feels about this, is the uh, direction that we've been going is um, try to be as carbon neutral as possible. So I would like to suggest that we include um, requiring uh, low carbon or green housing to improve restoration. Decide where possible, and there would be a best society if I was. And they couldn't, it's not the last of all means. I mean, well, just give you a little flexibility on it. Yes, I understand what you're saying. You do it well, where possible to make sure that I just want to be so you know, what you know, that it's available now in the area. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know why it wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. 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 For it to be possible for the town to preserve those laws as well as anybody doing work in the town. So it could be without the stretch code and made solar possible and made food scrap recycling possible. Uh, and we're looking at you know adding an electric bus to our, our fleet and as we're expanding all of the possibilities where we can have a positive impact on our environment, um, infrastructure and building back infrastructure is another area we can do that. So it starts to require that in our policies. Um, I think that is. Um, Good practice, and I, I think if you can put in some kind of caveat, you know, 
perhaps this is just a survey from you know uh, appeal process where they could appeal to the highway superintendent if they're unable to locate it, for example. You know, if there's some parameters that um, you know the town board feels is important, would, would qualify for an exemption, but if it wasn't available, like Okay. Well, a lot of the law already gives a considerable amount of discretion to the highway superintendent. This open official appeal process would be relatively complicated. Um, we would need to have an appeal board or person and met certain um, criteria. So I just you know what, what the law already says is that there's discretion built into the to the highway superintendent. So if that's a if the board is comfortable with that, that's one thing. Um, if we're going to have an appeals process, that's that's another thing. So I, I need a little bit more direction about what you'd like to see in the revised law. I guess that if there is that discretion already there for the highway superintendent, um, again, I think that that was built and put there so that there could be some kind of negotiation if need be. Um, to make reasonable accommodations for the utilities that those needed to be made so that ultimately the goal is to get the job done quickly and efficiently, but also to our benefit. So I think that those those are all built into it and now we're just adding one more layer, which is just adding the uh, environmental Um Mr. can you maybe point me to the part in the local law where it says the town highway supervisor has this discretion. Mm -hmm. I think it might be. I mean, it's, it's in several places throughout pretty much any place where um, in section, proposed section 87 dash 7 A mm -hmm. um, as the town specifications as determined by the superintendent of highways, um, 87 7 B. Or is additionally or otherwise directed by the superintendent of highways, um, 877C, or is additionally or otherwise directed. I mean, it's it's throughout the whole thing. Okay. But um, because th th there was a recognition when we were talking about preparing this law that there may be circumstances under which the, the general guidelines may not be, um, I don't want to say appropriate, but. Um, there may be extenuating circumstances where when you're in the field and the superintendent of highways is looking at the situation, um, there may be um, other um, avenues that are more appropriate. And so it does give discretion to the superintendent of highways. Okay, so let's open it up to the public. Um, anybody here uh, who would like to comment on the uh, draft local law about road districts? All right, uh, so if we're going to be making revisions to the law, I would recommend that the board leave the public hearing open and adjourn it to your October 11th meeting, which is your next legislative session. Um, that's not to say that you can't close the public hearing and vote on the law at that time, but I, I would prefer to leave the public hearing open and assume that they're going to be made. Yeah, I'd like to turn to our October 11th uh, thank you. All right, so I have a few announcements. Um, before I continue with my announcements, uh, I'd like to pause and recognize a special guest that we have on Zoom. I think she did. Yeah. I don't know who that is actually. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, I thought it was our one and only Thomas Esser, Fernando Gonzalez. Fernando, are you with us on Zoom? And if so, can you uh, talk into the screen so we can see you? Yes, sir. Thank you. That is not Fernando. <laughs> well, Fernando. Hola. <laughs> I guess we're going to move on. Should I go on to other announcements until he reappears? Yeah. All right. Well, as we have mentioned at multiple uh, meetings and in my supervisor's update, and we will continue to do so, notices are in the mail now regarding the new Westchester Power Electricity Supply contract. 
stable West Texas will, will be holding 10 information sessions in coming weeks, eight in English and two in Spanish for residents to get the facts and that they need to contact and ask questions. Sessions will be held on September 28th and 30th and October 4th, 5th and 6th at noon and 7 p.m. Pick a session that fits your schedule at sustainablewestchester.org slash WP slash Con Ed Territory uh, hashtag events. This new contract will help us lower our carbon footprint with 100% green electricity supply and guaranteed steady rates, which we know is so important in our current volatile energy market. Please get the facts so you can make an educated decision about whether to stay in the program or to opt out when the new contract goes into effect on November 1st. Okay, Fernando Gonzalez, are you back with us? Are you there for real? Are you frozen. frozen in time? Okay. Um, well, Fernando, can you hear us? If so, can you uh, raise your little hand if you're if you can? Okay. With the uh, with my computer, as you know, I'm in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, there's a storm passes uh, passing through. And I can barely hear you. Okay, well, I'm going to go fast, Fernando. I'm going to go as fast as I can. So, Fernando, okay. inform, you have informed us a few months ago that you would be moving on this fall to enjoy a much deserved retirement. This Friday, September 30th, will be Fernando's official last day as Austin Town Assessor. Fernando has served the town admirably for 10 years through thick and thin and led us through a full townwide reassessment revaluation of properties, resulting in bringing the town to 100% of real value, which was not a piece of cake. Though we wish we had one now to celebrate. We expect Fernando will still be around a little, though, hopefully he'll weather the storm down in Florida, um, helping out so that this is more like a see you later, not a true goodbye. Nevertheless, and even though he could not be with us in person, we wanted to recognize Fernando with a special proclamation tonight as he officially leaves this role for greener Catskill pastures where deer and bees frolic alongside his tractor. And he uses a moose or a bear every now and again. So with that, Fernando, I want to present you virtually with this proclamation. And I'm going to read it because it's really awesome. Um, in recognition of Fernando Gonzalez IAO. Whereas Fernando Gonzalez IAO came to the town of Austin as sole assessor in 2012 after several years as the assessor in the city of Newburgh and a successful career as an appraiser and real estate broker. And whereas Fernando guided the town of Austin through the townwide reappraisal and reassessment in 2015, which was no small task and required extensive coordination with consultants, staff, and members of the public. Thanks to Fernando, we all learned a lot about full market value over the years. And whereas under Fernando's leadership, the town has been able to maintain the assessment role at 100% of market value, which has made the assessment process more transparent to the public and agile in the ever-changing real estate market. And Whereas Fernando has also advised the town well in various complex tax certiorari cases where um, we are very grateful for his careful and measured guidance and we will miss him greatly. And whereas most of all, we will miss the constant supply of miel de luna, hunting tales from upstate and Fernando's sage advice born from his childhood in Puerto Rico. Fernando is truly one of a kind. And whereas we are very sad to see Fernando go, but we know he will enjoy his much deserved retirement with his wife, Martha, children, Andres, Ricky, and Melissa, with most of the post-retirement fun, certainly thanks to his grandsons, Jackson and Mason, and his hunting companion, Lulo. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Dana Levenberg, supervisor of the town of Austin, with the enthusiastic support of the Austin Town Board, thank Fernando Gonzalez for his 10 years of service to the town of Austin and wish him all the best for his well-earned retirement. Fernando, I hope you heard it. 
Also, I want to make sure that you know, be it further resolved, that September 30th, 2022, we proclaim oh. Orlando Washington. <laughs> 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 and Maybe he can still hear us. Okay, September 30th is today. For you. Congratulations, Fernando, on your next step. And uh, we really do hope it's good to see you, see you later, um, especially given the situation. And I hope that whoever needs to um, leave does so based on the information and the, the uh, advice that you get from your local municipal officials as far as that. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. I, I really appreciate the uh, the honor. It has been a pleasure to work for the town of Austin. I'm planning to retire to spend more time with family and friends. I will not be working with anybody else. Of course, I will always be available for the town of Austin to help in any way I can. So, you know, you have any questions or if you, have, you need any input from my perspective, I will always be available for you. It's been a pleasure to serve the town of Austin. It's, it has been an honor. And I hope that you, I'm sorry. I, I hope that uh, you continue to maintain the support, the maintenance of the role at 100% of value, which is fair and equitable and the correct thing to do. And again, uh, through all the changes and all the experiences that we've had and seen in, in the assessment industry, uh, market value is a measurement uh, and no political play or, or consideration should replace the, the idea of market value. Market value is market value, it'll change, it'll go up, it'll go down, but that's the only way to maintain correct assessed values. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope you, you've been able to hear me. Yes, we can hear everything you said, including your lesson. <laughs> yeah. Fernando, I want to thank you for taking the time to teach me and make sure that I understood all about 100% of the rules and everything else. Um, I will miss you. I think you did a great job for the for Austin. Um, And I also have a message from the Deputy Mayor, Mary Casada. Wishing you very well and uh, saying thank you to all you've done. So be safe and uh, I hope to see you when you get back. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for everything, Fernando, and congratulations for your retirement. But don't forget about it. <laughs> yep. Congratulations, Fernando. I wish you luck. Big shoes to fill here. And also, thank you and stay safe. And uh, Fernando, I'll just say you have always been a constant professional and uh, you've been that way as far as I'm concerned with the public as well as with uh, your colleagues and all of us. And we, we greatly appreciate everything that you've done for the town. And I, I agree with you 100%, about 100%. <laughs> thank you all. I hope that we can continue to continue to carry on your legacy. And uh, I appreciate, appreciate again, that you've gotten up to this point um, with, uh, with panache and, and honey. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Fernando. Okay, so be safe and uh, hopefully we'll see you back uh, in one piece. I hope the family is- Yes, I'm scheduled to fly back on Thursday. Uh, we're having terrible, terrible weather here. Just rain, fortunately, in Fort Lauderdale. But uh, hopefully, the storm will be past this area of, uh, by the end of the, by tomorrow, I think. So, okay. I should be back in town on Thursday. When you get back, you'll have this nice, heavy plaque to hang up on uh, along all of your uh, your other trophies. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. Uh, speaking of assessments, a tax reminder, uh, payment for the first half of school taxes is due by September 30th for both the Austin and Briarcliff school districts. You can pay your taxes in person at 16 Croton Avenue. The tax office will be open until 6 p.m. on Thursday, September 29th and Friday, September 30th. Also, you can pay by mail 
or via the drop box at the Oxnard Post Office. Make sure to get your payment postmark by September 30th, or you can pay online at the tax receiver page of your of our website, which is townofoxnard.com slash CMF slash receiver hyphen of hyphen tax. If you have any questions, please call the tax receiver's office at 914-762-8790. They are always more than happy to help. This Saturday, October 1st at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. and Sunday, October 2nd at 3 p.m., Westchester Collaborative Theater presents That's Not All She Wrote, celebrating the work of women playwrights. Get your tickets now at wctheater.org. Sunday, October 2nd from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. is Family Fun Fishing Day at the Austin Boat Company Club. All you need to bring is your family. OVCC will provide food, drink, bait, and fishing gear. Can't be guaranteed you're going to catch a fish, but we're going to help you. And you are not required to be a member to attend. More information is available at OVCC.org. Well, can you count to me? I'm going to be down there. There's arts and crafts and jewelry making and games and all kinds of stuff including on top of fishing. If you have one kid that just wants to fish and another one that just doesn't, so really it's family fun and fish. Yeah. Okay, and I will be there. Okay, fantastic. The Austin Historic Cemeteries Conservancy will be hosting a jazz picnic at Dale Cemetery on Sunday, October 9th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. featuring the Elijah Duncan Quartet. Tickets are $20 and proceeds benefit OHCC restoration work at our historic cemetery. We've got two of them. RSVP by October 2nd to OHCC10562 at gmail.com. Any other announcements from my board colleagues? Green Austin, is that a this weekend? Green Austin Tag Sale is this weekend, townwide tag sale. If you go on to Facebook, uh, to the Green Austin page on Facebook, you can see the map and all of the different tag sales that will be happening around. I think it's too late now to sign up, but you can certainly. Um, Purchase lots of uh, free use and wonderful um, free lots. Okay. I believe that there's an event October 12th about um, green digging and schooling that Sunday will make maybe daily like school routine. I am not sure if it's on Zoom, but we will. It is on Zoom. Uh, I I believe she sent out a flyer that just caught my eye. So hopefully we can uh, we will share that around. And just as we have been sent out, there you have it. And go ahead. Oh, New York Energy Grid transition. transition and Heat Pumps 101, Wednesday, October 12th, 7 to 8 30 p.m. on Zoom. There, there will be the vice president of external, external affairs for the New York Independent System Operators, which is the overall energy they kind of manage the grid essentially for all of new york state and lauren Royce from energy smart homes or she is the energy smart homes director for sustainable westchester and she'll talk a little bit about heat pump technology and the process of switching to one for your home and or business and how it can help with your heating and your cooling needs and then there will be some local heat pump installation expert there who can also talk a little bit about the different types of systems that are available for different types of homes. So if you have an old home like me, you might find one is better for you. And if you have one that already has built in, if you have a home that already has built in um, ductwork, then you will find that there's another one that suits you. So I'm not exactly sure where you find your Zoom link, but I'm gonna say contact somebody at the Bailiff's <laughs> office um, at 914-941-1111 or uh, the office will be sending a Zoom link. Yeah, so we'll be sending them a Zoom link. There you have it. Okay. And we're grateful for the continued um, effort that everybody is making to uh, remind us how we can continue to be energy smart. And with that, and speaking of energy smart, last week was car free week, ending with car free day on Thursday, September 22nd. Uh, this year we partnered again with Green Austin, the village of Austin, 511 New York Rideshare. Austin School District and the local business community to bring a fun suite of forward-looking sustainable activities 
Thank you to local businesses including Microsoft Music, Tasty Table, LaGrea Dance Academy, Hudson Valley Books for Humanity, Big Foot Creamery, Family Veterinary Care, and Sleeping Cell Brewery for offering fun giveaways for those who chose alternative modes of transportation to visit these businesses last week. And a special big thank you to Mary Missile for helping coordinate this effort. Car free day itself was a little rainy, so some of us tried to make up our car free or car light efforts on Friday. You can still take the pledge now and participate through Friday, September 30th to reduce or eliminate your car usage. And in particular, single passenger gas fuel car usage for at least one day by visiting www.511nyrideshare.org slash car dash free dash day. Remember, it's not just about one day, it's about changing habits and thinking long term about reducing our dependence on single occupancy fossil fuel powered vehicles. This is just to get you thinking about how to do it a lot. We have started our first round of budget meetings with department heads this week. We're grateful to our department heads for thinking carefully about their budget requests this year as we develop a sound, tentative budget to present to the board and the community in October. Next Thursday, October 6th, the Austin Community Equity Task Force will be holding an equity university for representatives from the town and village volunteer boards and committees. The goal of this equity university is to help our volunteer board members explore how they can exercise their roles better through the lens of equity. This has been a project the Equity Task Force has been working on for some time, and we hope it will be a fruitful exercise for all of our volunteer boards as the Equity Task Force works towards developing a diversity, equity, inclusion strategic plan for the entire community. That is it for my commencement. And with that, I will turn it over to uh, yeah, are there any liaisons? Okay. With that, I will see if there is public comment on any of the agenda items. I would say if there's nobody here in attendance and there's nobody from our Zoom attendees list, so therefore, I'm going to say there is no public comment on agenda items. So I'm going to move Okay, with that, I'm going to go to the board resolution and I will turn it over to one and only. Okay, um, approval of minutes, regular meeting, September 13th, 2022, result of the town board of the town of Austin and hereby approves the September 13th, 2022 minutes of the regular meeting as presented. Approval of voucher detail report resolved at the town board of the town of Austin and hereby approves the voucher detail report dated September 27, 2022 in the amount of $593,045. Okay. Okay. Resolution 39 Stormy Town Road Subdivision Road. Whereas at its September 28, 2021 legislative session, the town board adopted a resolution expressing its intent to offer an offer of dedication should one be made to the town for internal road to be constructed as approved as part of the approved subdivision at 39th Storm Town Road, Stormy Town Road, subject to satisfaction of all the conditions set forth in the resolution. And whereas the applicant has informed the town that in order to be able to file the subdivision plot and create mailing addresses for the proposed properties, the name of the road must be established prior to the conditions set forth in the September 28, 2021 resolution being completed. And whereas the town received input from the Central Committee of Organized War Veterans, which provided three recommendations of Austin servicemen killed in war. And now therefore be resolved, the town board has determined that the internal road be named McSorley Road after Bannon McSorley, who was killed in World War II in 1944 after enlisting in the Canadian Air Force because he wanted to serve with the Allied forces before the United States entered a war, and he was buried in Kent, England, and does not receive the memorial treatment of other service members killed in combat or buried in Austin in cemeteries. And it is further resolved, the town board's actions in deciding the name of the road at this stage is solely due to timing constraints and the applicant proceedings with development, and in taking such action, the town board does not make any representations or guarantees regarding to the town accepting dedication of the road beyond what is set forth in the September 28, 2021 resolution, which remains controlling on this issue. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Second. 
So first I'd like to thank the Austin Centralized Committee of Organized for Veterans for helping us to be a very deserving hero from our community to be remembered by the Green Road to be constructed. I also want to thank our council for the town, Madonna, for passing their ordinance resolution, making sure that it's clear that we are not protecting this road at this time, but only continuing to use it to be named in accordance with our procedure. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. One second. Okay. Um, resolution Stormwater Facilities Maintenance Agreement, Chocolate Sky LLC, whereas as the condition of the subdivision approval grant by the planning board, Chocolate Sky LLC is required to enter into a stormwater facilities maintenance agreement with the town to ensure the stormwater management system approved by the planning board is constructed and installed by the applicant in accordance with the approved product documents and all applicable. New York State DEC regulation standards and guidelines for the project and thereafter is maintained, cleaned, repaired, replaced, and restored in perpetuity by the applicant to ensure optimum performance and are therefore be resolved. The town board hereby authorizes the supervisor to execute a stormwater management system maintenance and easement agreement with Chocolate Sky LLC and be further resolved. The supervisor is authorized to sign all documents reasonably necessary to have the agreement recorded with the county clerk. Okay. This is a standard resolution that we've used for previous projects in the past. Um, but if you want it to refer to um, 39 Stone Town Road, it can certainly be amended as a condition of the subdivision susceptible grant by the planning board. Okay. Personnel resignation resolved that the town board of the town of Austin accepts with regret the resignation of Angela Juarez from the position of part time intermediate clerk in the town tax receiver's office effective September 29, 2022. We are saying farewell to two great employees this week. Also, Angela Juarez, who has been working part time in the tax receiver's office while attending college at the City College of New York. Angela's career goals are more in the field of medicine as she needs to be a physician's assistant. So she has told us it is time to focus more on her long term career goals in her field. I just think that's her. Okay. She's a wonderful world of finance and taxes, but alas, she wants to be a different field of her work. We will miss her greatly and wish her the best of luck in an undoubtedly bright future. She has been wonderful. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anything opposed? First of now, resignation for retirement resolved that the town board of the town of Austin accepts with regret the resignation for purposes of retirement of Fernando Gonzalez from the position of assessor effective October 1st, 2022. Um, great regret. Once again, we accept Fernando's resignation and uh, I think he said it all before. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any in favor? Any opposed? Uh, personnel food service helper resolved that the town board of the town of Austin increases the hours of Marie Lupin to Austin in the position of food service helper from 17.5 hours per week part time to 35 hours per week full time effective October 3rd, 2022. And be further resolved that due to the increase in Ms. Pinto's hours, the town board also increases her salary to a prorated annual salary of $37,905 for the remainder of 2022 effective October 3rd, 2022. Closes and another opens in another department. Marilyn Pinto has been working part time in our senior nutrition program for about a year now, and she has proven to be quite a go getter. The retirement of Wanda Walker, also with her regret, this summer, after many great years to serve our town, we explored an opportunity to increase her hours to full time and do the same with another part timer in the department, Louise Pecan. Both Marilyn and Louise are excellent community members and our workers. We are so excited that they will be continuing their careers with us on the impact. Okay. 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 Okay.
shut the site. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Personnel chauffeur resolved that the town board of the town of Austin increases the hours of Lizu Tan Austin in the position of chauffeur from 17 and a half hours per week part time to 35 hours per week full time. Effective October 3rd, 2022, be it resolved that due to the increase in Mr. Dutan's hours, the town board also increases the salary to prorated annual salary of $37,905 for the remainder of 2022, effective October 3rd, 2022. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Justice Court Assistance Program Application 2022 to 2023 is all of the town that is all of the Board of the Town of Austin in New York authorizes the Austin Town Court to apply for a JCAP grant in the 2022-2023 grant cycle up to thirty thousand dollars. Second. We love JCAP grants. Each year, our Justice Court has the opportunity to apply for grant funding to help pay for product supplies and equipment, and the application needs to be approved by the town board. The $30,000 grant this year will go a long way towards improving office furniture in the Justice Court offices and purchase other much needed things. Second. All those favor? Aye. Any opposed? A uh, correspondence to be received and filed. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin Hebrew accepts the following correspondence. Resolution from MGM subdivision 5 Hawks Avenue, reapproval from April 6, 2022, and zoning board transcripts, I believe. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 With that, I open up visitor recognition and senior listeners. I close it for the record. And I ask that we adjourn to executive session for advice from council on personnel. So I have a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you so much for joining us. Wishing a Shana Tova or Happy New Year to all my friends who are celebrating the Jewish New Year this week. Next week, we will be back here at 6 p.m. Frozen for a work session on Monday, October 3rd, as some of us will be observing the Jewish holiday. Tuesday night and Wednesday, we will 